everyone, it's me again, it's Miranda, and I am a second year training clinical psychologist. So if we know each other already, hello. If you're new here, I'm not gonna lie, you picked a bit of a strange time to come and say hello, but that's no fault of your own, and you're still very welcome, very welcome to join us. So I'm gonna level with you. So I actually had a very different plan for today's video. It probably one of my more ambitious ideas so far. It was gonna be high octane, high energy, usual chaos, lots of different shots, etc, etc. That hasn't happened and I kind of wanted to share with you a little bit as to why. So on Friday I had a study day and my plan was get all my work done for uni and then spend like the late afternoon filming and doing all of that stuff. From like the crack of dawn, I kind of had back to back sort of meetings and errands and bits and pieces to run until 2 p.m. kind of things around like recruitment for my study and meeting with potential third year supervisors. So that ran all the way up to 2 p.m. like no break, back to back. And I got off my last call and I crashed. And like not in like a cute <laughs> TGI Friday way. Like it was like physically, emotionally, spiritually just cave in. And I was kind of thinking in my head, you know, I can just drag my ass through that video that I had planned and give it the whole, hello everyone, it's me again, it's Miranda. You know, I can switch that on and off, come rain or shine. I always have that in my arsenal. But instead, I thought I'm going to do a more reflective vlog. Park that one for another time. And the reason being, I think it's twofold. I think if I didn't do something reflective, I'm really missing an opportunity to kind of try and understand why that cave-in happened when it did on Friday. And also, I think it's just really important not to, especially if you're kind of using social media to represent the doctorate, to not only represent the highlight reel and to actually show some of the things that are difficult as they're happening, if you feel comfortable to do so. So I'm gonna do something reflective today. For those of you who have watched my reflective practice video, you'll know that I like this kind of free form style, which isn't very structured, which is what I'm gonna do today. So I have picked three themes, which I think are kind of important to help me unpack exactly what happened on Friday and the things that were leading up to it. But other than that, I really haven't planned anything. I've got no idea what's gonna come out of my mouth, to be perfectly honest, so this could be interesting. So I've timestamped the three themes in the description box below, so if one of them speaks to you more than another and you want to jump around, then feel free to do that. So I think the first thing that I want to think about is the fact, I mean, it's the big one, it's working in intensive care during what has been termed as the super surge. We don't know who came up with that, but that's what it's called. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting. So some of you have seen that I've already made a video on kind of working in intensive care, but I really, have to say that things have felt very different since I came back from Christmas. And I think a lot of that won't be a surprise to you guys listening in because we've all seen the headlines, you know, we've reached all these kind of outrageous, morbid new records in terms of daily deaths, transmission rates, hospitalization rates. We know about staff members being redeployed into critical care and intensive care, etc. But I think it's just kind of living that and seeing that and hearing about that, like, you know, with your own eyes. It's, um, it's been intense. <laughs> and I think I'm kind of trying to unpack exactly what about it has been kind of hitting me harder recently. And I think, you know, one of the aspects is intensive care is really unique in many ways but I think so as psychologists right we are used to dealing with and hearing about awful stuff all the time you know people will come to us and talk to us about their traumas their terrible relationships about how they've been mistreated that is usually kind of like when psychologist enters stays right you know that's when we come into people's lives you know we can deal with that and you know that's not to undermine it because that stuff's hard anyway but I think we're used to it. But I think the difference is with ICU is that 
in other scenarios, you are usually talking about things that have happened to people instead of things that are happening. And I'm really struck at the moment by this sense of like, I'm coming into people's lives during what is arguably the worst week of their life and a period of time that they will never ever forget and it's just kind of being part of that as things are literally unfolding as they're literally being told that their loved one isn't going to survive and that they're going to die and all of those things and it's just really takes your breath away sometimes and I think kind of underneath that because I think you know everyone can say like yeah obviously that's going to be hard but I think what I'm actually come to thinking about it like grappling with is just this sense of not feeling very helpful and I think I'm just realizing how much of like my professional identity and sort of job satisfaction is wrapped up in this idea of helping people and being able to change things for people and right now in this situation there really is not much you can do and I think in other scenarios like you can really like pride yourself on being able to like help people to change their moods and their life and things that are going wrong for them and with this it's you just feel so powerless and that's really difficult but I think you know that kind of was always there you know coming into people's lives when it's things are really hard and things are going really wrong and they're not being able to do anything about it and grief is grief and there's really nothing you can do about that I think actually what's been getting to me most and what has contributed to that like Friday sort of cave-in it was just I, I think I've spent the last couple of weeks just feeling really really angry like really angry I don't know if you guys have noticed it but I think just in the news there's been so much more around seeing what New Zealand and Australia are up to and just like what life looks like on the other side of the globe and just how well they have managed it and how few deaths they have in comparison to us and I think it's just this feeling of everything feels so avoidable it could have been so avoidable and it's actually really hard talking to people and witnessing the irreparable damage that has been done onto individuals and onto families. And all of that could have not happened. It's, it, we could have avoided it. Like, it's just, and I feel so angry because I think ICU is really interesting because it's kind of like this microcosm, concentrated example of just how political decisions, decisions that are made at the government level, government level, can it directly impact people's life, like on a life and death level, like it's, it's that extreme. The decisions that were made by the government before Christmas, in the lead up to that, like in terms of who went into what tiers, who could mix with who, all of that is now being played out in ICU, and you see that people are dying because of it, and you know, I've, my parents are, what, 66? And I'm speaking to families who are losing loved ones who are much younger than that. And you're just, it, <laughs> I think it, it's really hard to compute. And I think that's kind of another thing that's just like interesting about being a, like a, a psychological professional at this time of just like how much personal resonance there is with the things that are being shared with you because we are all living through exactly the same stuff. Um, and it's just kind of strange because we're all living through this pandemic and it's almost like the people that I'm working with are living through the worst case scenario that exists in my mind of what could happen to me or to a person that I love as a result of coronavirus and that's very hard to disentangle and I think as much as this is all like really heavy and really big stuff but I just like I just feel like I'm, I, honestly, I feel like my eyes are being, like, peeled open with this placement. And I've just, I feel so much more politically galvanised than I ever have, just for the reason, because, like, it's just become so clear to me that 
it matters what people decide in terms of politics. It really matters. And as psychologists, like I think we can't be neutral. We can't sit on the fence and we can't stay quiet. Because I think with other issues, you know, we all know the impact of like political decisions onto poverty, onto mental health. But I think those things are often played out over a much longer time frame, And it's kind of almost harder to quantify that and to like really see the direct link between the two. But here we can see the decisions that were made by the government killed people. And it just, it just makes me think so much around like, psychologists what we need to do in terms of thinking about things like on a public health level on a national level and I uh, yeah I just think I felt so angry and like energized by it which has been so tiring and I guess yeah it's just it's kind of a lot to take on I suppose the second thing that's um, I think has contributed is just like now that we've got into 2021, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like there's been so much more chat around like we're almost reaching that year mark of being in coronavirus land, which is true. It's really approaching. And I think it's just really made me think of the fact that like I've spent now almost a year of my doctorate under coronavirus conditions, which is just ah oh, <laughs> I know and I think there's just so much like slow burn with all of that and like don't get me wrong there have been elements of my training which have felt completely unchanged particularly my placements I've really felt like I've got so much out of that it really hasn't hindered my learning or like that stuff I think it's really hit kind of my teaching because that's completely remote now and seeing my cohort and it's just it's hard because I think if you know if you as a person watching if you're also a trainee or someone wanting to get onto the doctorate the first thing that people will say to you who've gone through it themselves is like you know your cohort that's going to be the thing that gets you through your doctorate like lean on them like draw on them for support and it's so true and you know as much as we're there for each other via whatsapp and you know we can see sort of one or two people on walks and things when the rules allow whatever like it's just not the same and I like really really miss them and I think there's certain things that only my cohort would understand and like there are just certain things that there's you know you can only share it with certain people and they would just get it and that feels like a huge loss and I think also from a teaching perspective I'm feeling a lot of loss because the first six months like when I say it was amazing like I was so amped I can remember so many examples of coming out of lectures being so pumped like I was always really academic in school and I always had this vision of what university was going to be like like full of debates and people like going back and forth and coming out of things feeling like mm. and undergrad was not like that like <laughs> it was not like that but I got to the doctor and it, and it was like that like so many like-minded people interesting discussions every topic I was interested in and it just feels so diluted now because everything's online. You, of course, don't have the same atmosphere. Um, and yeah, I'm just feeling like really gutted about losing that now and kind of coming into... I think it was kind of all fine when things were contained within 2020 and now we've got into 2021 and it's a bit like... <laughs> When's it over? And it's not over and I'm actually, yeah, it's actually having a much bigger impact on my doctorate experience than I expected. And I think it's also just like feelings of guilt that sometimes I have days and I have more good days with the doctorate than bad days. Like, don't get me wrong, like it's far tipping favorably. But then I have days where I'm like, oh, I just want to get through this. Like, I just want to get this done. Like, oh, I just want to get this lecture to be over. Like, I want this lecture to be over. And I just feel really guilty about that and kind of saddened by that because this is like what I wanted for so long. And it's just not turned out to be how I pictured it in my mind. And the beginning was. And I think that's quite like, yeah, like I said, there's like a lot of loss there that's you're trying to process. <laughs> I feel like the third thing, the third theme is really just around like what kind of living in these times has done to our over-focus of work because I think like 
all we can really do now is work. Like our social and leisure activities are so unbelievably stripped back that we can't do the vast majority of the things that we would usually do. And that just means I just feel like I'm working a lot. And I don't know, I think part of it is like, I feel really like creative and energized and like I feel like I've got so many things that I want to say and so many things that I want to do. But there's like, there's no, the other side is missing. There's no kind of like blowing off steam. There's no kind of just doing non-productive things. And I think like, I don't know, I, I guess just like at the moment it feels like, well, I can either work or be bored and I'd rather work. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm doing. Because I don't like, you know, I do all of the other stuff like going for a walk, I'm reading every day, which is great. I do lots of yoga, I exercise, do my food shops, but like that genuinely only takes up so much time, <laughs> to be honest. And yeah, I think if I didn't kind of, you know, spend loads of time, say like on these videos, for example, I feel like I'd have loads of time on my hands. And yeah, I'd rather be doing stuff than not doing stuff at all. And I think that's meant that I've just been like working a lot more. Like I think the first few weeks of January, it's been like working the entire week and then spending the entire weekend doing videos. And I'm just like so plugged in and the time goes really quickly, but I'm like intensely plugged into things. Like when I edit videos, like I can be doing things for like seven, eight hours and just like not even realize at all. And that's all well and good because it's like, I, I want to be doing these things. But at the same time, there's just... I think it really does zap your energy and I just don't really know what the solution is because like I said it's like it feels like it's either work or be bored and I don't want to be bored and I think also there's a part of me that's being a bit avoidant of being bored because when you have some space you can actually think you can actually feel and I'm I don't really fancy doing either of those things at the moment so yeah I'm just kind of plunging myself into things um and I'm just not sure like I don't think that is particularly sustainable but yeah like I said I don't really know what the solution is so yeah I think just like in saying all of this <laughs> now that I've ranted on I feel like I immediately already feel the pull to kind of be like who is being loud outside I'm in the middle of something emotional as I was saying, I already feel like the pull to say, you know, guys, like, I'm fine. Like, I'm totally okay. And where is that coming from? That is coming from a fear of people listening to this and being like, oh my God, are you okay? Or like, is she coping? And that really annoys me. It's really annoyed. <laughs> I'm annoyed myself kind of even entertaining this line of discussion, but it's a real thing. And I think it's just so important to a hold in mind that we can both be feeling negative feelings and coping at the same time and I don't know I feel like I have worked through some stuff so what am I gonna do now mm, I think I'm gonna go for a walk maybe call some people that I like that is usually a good thing and I think I'm just going to try and take it a bit easy and yeah, just continue to like unpack some of these things and just to think about some of the stuff that are coming up because I think it's been useful. Thank you for listening if you've made it this far. It has actually been like, I do feel a lot lighter kind of getting this stuff off my chest and talking about it without, yeah, I think sometimes when you talk about it with real people, they feel the pressure to give you a solution and to help you and to say like it's gonna be okay which is lovely but like that's not really what I want right now I know it's I know everything's gonna be okay maybe it's not you know but like it's just good to be able to work through some stuff without feeling like you need to do anything else but talk about it so yeah I'm going to let you go I hope you guys are okay if any of this has kind of resonated please do let me know like share your thoughts and how you're kind of finding all of this stuff I'm always really interested to read your comments and I love receiving them so yeah take care of yourselves please look after yourselves and I will very much look forward to speaking with you next week take care ciao for now